done for most characters, but given the small target at hand, getting around back air or even just outright avoiding up air in certain situations will definitely prove to be vital for Zheja's success. We start things off on Pokemon Stadium 2, so let's see how 128 starts out. Ooh, and Jaja gonna be finally finding that up to go, and that's gonna be a bit of damage, but not gonna be able to find too much else off of it. I love that choice because Black Twit doesn't finish the up B and instead just retreats to the ledge, uh, because Jaja will, would probably just have a huge punish ready. Like, trying to sit to center stage, I think, is the smartest thing Black Twin is going to be doing right now. Forcing in the approach from Kirby leads to almost half of Cloud's kit acting as a solid counter hit. You got dash attack to worry about, you got Nair, forward air even. Like, and all of these moves are going to be hitting strong in their own right, even cross flush there, just to win out in neutral to start stage control. Like, on paper, Black Twins has this in the bag. Yeah, on paper, but JJ JJ is a play that is really known to make the impossible happen. A uh, really creative play, also really tight execution, especially uh, in being able to find a lot of those edge guards. So that's really the win condition uh, for JJ here. It's how soon can I actually get Cloud off stage, uh, and then how can I obliterate that stock? Yeah, ending things out, I feel like that's where the difficulty is going to lie for both of these players, but Jaja proving me wrong right away. Down tilt forward smash confirm is going to be first blood on the set. Oh yeah, now Black Twin just trying to space a couple of four leaders right now, occupying standing stage and is able to catch Jaja. Uh, I believe they were dashing it in that moment and now controlling the stage. But again, like, Black Twin is just giving up just a little bit of stage as uh, he does opt to uh, try to just limit a little bit more. But now, as Jaja, how do you get off the ledge here? Just barely gonna be uh, not getting hit by that dash attack. Oh! But getting hit by that back air, because the real answer to getting off that ledge is carefully. You have to be careful of committing to a jump with Kirby because Cloud is able to occupy that airspace so easily, and Kirby's not really known for being swift in the air. K Kirby's not known for being swift, period. But, uh, you know, Cloud just is able to catch people jumping so well. JJ tracking Black Twins really, really well there as well. Tries to position himself once again uh, to be able to catch that up B, but is not going to be able to find it. Like, using Stone was a very interesting move there, but I think really smart, because having to react to Climb Hazard can be pretty dangerous with Kirby all around, plus decent enough damage. Like, maintaining this ledge makes this matchup look really good for Zheja right now. Well, Zheja just sitting patiently in shield, trying to see if Black Twins is going to be a little bit too aggressive, but he is still not going to press too far quite yet. Uh, once again, I really like that choice to stop that cross flash halfway through. Um, especially on Wi-Fi, it's, a, it's, a, it's like an unreactable mix-up. Um, it's... Oh, no. Okay, then. <laughs> Zheja the ledge, what happens? With Black Twins sitting on last stock now, I feel like this hurdling is going to be much less effective because when Cloud is eliciting that reaction for Kirby to come in, so many moves allow him to burst off, but fighting from behind, Jaysha is going to be like so comfortable reacting to Cloud forced to rush in. And look at the situation we're in now. A full stock up, having lapped in percent, Black Twins even with Limit looking like he's struggling to find his hit. Yeah, I just feel like JJ, JJ's execution has just been so solid so far. As soon as he was able to find that one big combo hit, he was just able to put on so much damage. Uh, and the next one, that's going to be Black Twins in trouble. He's going to be finding himself off stage. The way that JJ is also uh, spacing a lot of his buttons on shield is really careful uh, as well. He's really ambiguous as to, you know, am I going to be able to low profile you up? Am I going to be able to, is this going to be safe enough to the point that I can still shield afterwards? Um, and so Black Twins is just not really able to find much of an answer to JJ jumping in on him. These little bouts in neutral proving to be disastrous for Black Twins. Difficulty in finding the mark against Kirby really showcasing here. Even trying to just swing at the air. And I like the idea, but JJ has been actually doing a really good job with staying grounded too. Like, keeping things low to the ground is where Kirby's gonna find the most value out of their tools, and even the little use of the copy ability, Blade Beam actually coming in clutch for Zheja as a safe return to stage as he looks to end out this match. K Kirby's not supposed to be zoning from across the stage and throwing out projectiles and catching Black Twins, like, charging his limit. That's not supposed to be happening, but it is. Uh, and and JJ, as a result, is able to catch a lot of dashes and is able to put on a lot more damage uh, in spaces that he normally would not be able to threaten. That was such a dominant grab as well. Uh, Black Twins is probably anticipating like another dash attack for mid-range uh, that JJ kept using to call out dashes. JJ really just stared Black Twins in the face. 
took that whole limit blade beam, found the throw, and took that game one. And and JJ Puff didn't ball just of steel. That, he didn't just uh, take that game one. He took it pretty confidently as well. He was treating shield, I feel like, in this game really, really well. Uh, he wasn't allowing himself to miss space too many hits on black twin shield. He spaced himself in such ways that he would be able to either follow up with another down tilt, continue all of that block pressure, uh, and in ways that he would always skirt around the threat of cloud up B out of shield, uh, which... If, if you're not spacing great and if you're not pressing buttons on somebody's shield correctly, uh, it could pose quite a threat. But we're going to be going to town and city. How do you feel about the stage choice? Ooh, I think this is a really solid one from Black Twins because this is a lot of space. And Kirby, like we mentioned earlier, a bit slow on the actual approach portion. And if Kirby's going to be pressing forward, at least there's a decent enough room for Cloud to be able to break. And Kirby's combos don't reliably bring from end to end. So there's a lot of wiggle room here for Black Twins to be able to take back stage control and at the very least play defensively if need be. Sticking on the Cloud, I think, is a strong decision along with the stage choice. So it's going to be on Jeja to try and find that early lead and really assert that dominance that we saw in game one. Ooh, and, and I feel like some of that is already showing with the way that Jeja is confidently parrying some of uh, Black Twins' is falling aerial, uh, which is always a really good sign that like, hey, I'm able to catch on to the tempo. I have a good sense of your rhythm. Uh, you need to mix up some of these falling aerials, but this is right now Black Twins' ledge trap to get. Is he going to be able to find this? No, ma'am. And in fact, in the finals, right in the clutches of Kirby's big feet. Taking the little bits of damage goes a long way because that's just Jeja waiting the opportunity out. Because look, Limit really came and went with no opportunity for Black Twins to really assert dominance. And we've seen this interaction a couple of times, utilizing Stone Kirby to mix up the recovery from high or low and making it safe the entire way. I think it's brilliant from Jeja because it's taking advantage of Black Twins being patient. Yeah, if Black Twins is just respecting that, um, because, you know, there's a big hitbox out there, that's obviously not something that you can mess with too much. But what a catch from, uh, from Black Twins. Yeah, talking about big hitboxes forward, they're finally coming in handy for Black Twins. And managing to occupy that approaching space from Kirby, super important. And Black Twins trying to get greedy with it. It was a stock already cooked because of the high percentage. And he would have been a king if he got it. But Kirby, for whatever it's worth with those multiple jumps and slow speed, at least has the maneuverability to get out of harm's way. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about this stage choice to Town and City. And... Honestly, on those side platforms, that is something that Cloud uses a lot better than Kirby when it comes to edge guarding. Because Cloud, um, obviously going to be that much faster than Kirby, is going to be able to maneuver around a little bit easier uh, and cover Kirby both high and low simultaneously. However, we saw JJ wait on the top platform there, and, and Black Twins really only lost their stock because they wanted to commit fully uh, to, to trying to go through like the, the Cloud up B kill. You know, playing up the stage, I think, just works out super well. And Jeja actually saved him in that situation. If he hadn't gone for Final Cutter, he would have the kill. But now, it looks like he's fully done playing with his food. That's a done Black Twin stock already. That's Cloud off stage, and that's Kirby Edgeguard to give. Kirby has anything. That was a roller coaster of an Edgeguard. Kirby has a lot of sustain. He can be out there for a while, stall with his multi jumps, throw out a lot of hitboxes that you need to respect. And Cloud sometimes just lacks the recovery mix-ups uh, that he needs to be able to get past somebody like Kirby. Reacting to Jeja's movement options seems to have been really difficult for Black Twins in this scenario. And it, it's rough to see because Jeja is just staying so elusive from all these big buttons. You'd think with a sword that size, Black Twins would have no problem with scooping Kirby off. But difficulty in finding safe landings of his own is really flipping the script on how this matchup should play out. Ooh, JJ gonna be only committing to that pivot cancel F tilt while uh, Black Twins is just out jumping. And now this is still within the realm of doability for Black Twins. Just needs to find that one big down through those side B just to put on that kind of damage. Getting all these parries, but when it's Kirby and he lo and he pancakes after he hits your shield, a, a parry means nothing because his his hook box is just gone. And he's keeping himself so low to the ground when he does it. And it's really, like JJ has been taking full advantage of it in the previous two games that we've seen so far. But at least the Black Twins' credit, he is trying to keep on the pressure he does press to Jeja, even if it's not like backfiring on him a little bit because he is bleeding on this last stock. But taking full advantage of the platform showcasing this town pick mm -hmm. was a smart one. Yeah. But going blade beam for blade beam with Jeja, continuing to make this copy ability look really funny. 
Yeah, and, and again, like, this just comes back to how effective Town of Tidious with Cloud's mobility, right? Because he's able to jump from platform to platform while Kugabi is still stuck trying to find you on the other one. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge for uh, JJ to really pin down Black Twins as he does uh, continue to charge that limit. But one good hit from JJ should be able to do it. So, yep. Has the forward tilt for a good hit. JJ going up in the set 2-0 now. And one more game to make it a clean sweep over Black Twins. Do you mm -hmm. think we might be seeing the 3-0, Dara? We already saw two concept. Well, that wasn't a two stock. That was almost a two stock. Uh, but these were two pretty confident games from JJ. JJ, I feel like what a lot of this game is boiling down to is the fact that JJ is finding those edge guards, finding those kills off stage. Black Twins, maybe not so much. I really appreciate a lot of the way that JJ is mixing uh, with, uh, as you mentioned before, like down B timings. Black Twins is going to need to find some sort of counter to play, but just not finding it yet. With the bans in place for Battlefield and Small Battlefield, we are returning to Town and City for Game 3. And I feel like this is a solid choice from Black Twins because the stage was working out well for him. It was just Jeja looking really comfortable in this matchup and having a very concise game plan. Pushing out to the ledge and taking full advantage of Cloud's weaknesses off stage has been working really well. But if Black Twins focuses more on keeping his boots to the ground and just bunkering down with those plats as we've seen him effective so far in Game 2, I think we might see a change in pace. JJ keeps catching these landings from Black Twins. I feel like we've seen so many dash attacks connect simply just because Black Twins is jumping, landing with a hitbox, jumping and landing with a hitbox each time. JJ is planting his feet, waiting, and then dash attacking at the perfect moment uh, to be able to find those. So I just want to see some timing mix-ups, maybe some double jumps uh, in the air, or just short hopping and, and, and empty hopping uh, a little bit more. You know, empty hops do a world of good for pressure from Cloud because there's so much value in just pressuring with a grab or a successful button. And we've seen a lot of successful grabs from Black Twins in the past three games. Even the beginning of this game three has opened with a couple of grabs from Black Twins, but Cloud doesn't really get a lot off of that. JJ, this is such a scary position to be in that is clearly controlling the stage, but just like that, Black Twins is going to be able to cross him up. As soon as Kirby does commit to falling into one direction, oh wow, here it is again. Yeah, strong forward tilt, and it looked like a little bit of a mishap on the DI there, but regardless, it's going to be JJ taking the first stock once again. Did Jab just cross up Kirby's shield? Ooh. Did that happen? Did... did... I, I wasn't imagining that, right? When Cloud was was jabbing J... Oh, oh no. Oh, it's that's... JJ. Yeah, no, that's JJ, JJ. If you don't know him yet, you're going to learn today. Oh, inhale that, leading that to the hilarity. That is JJ in the quotient. You know what he is looking for. Uh, guys, please, if, if that's a clue to be the quotient, you just gotta leave him be. That is that is a top five character when he's just standing menacing. <laughs> Look like, Kirby him. planking is still, like, a atrocity that you have to fight. And it's why I was so, like, complimenting of Black Twin's insistence to control center stage and rely on the platforms. Because once that battle becomes the ledge, Cloud does not like playing out of the corner. Even with Limit, the situation can go awry so quickly. And JJ already putting that to practice in this Game 3 is making it look like even more of a daunting task to bounce back. JJ dashing back and forth, going to be trying to scout out one of these landings, but Black Twins actually going to be catching that jump from JJ once again, just pressuring that shield, but Black Twins keeping his feet grounded, understood. Hey, JJ's going to be jumping in here, going to be trying to find a way to get the stock and just up smash them for it. I think staying aggro here is Black Twins' claim to fame, but unfortunately, one missed move is all that it takes for JJ JJ to confirm a 3 0 victory in advance in the top 128. In a pretty dominant fashion as well. Um, JJ, JJ, for the most part, was able to put on that damage pretty consistently. As soon as he found that foil throw that was just big damage inbound, he was able to find a lot of those edge guards, and JJ was able to do Kirby things. Like uh, running off stage with an inhale like that, that's tough. You gotta, you just gotta hold that. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those those marks of mastery for the character that put JJ, JJ on the map as a threat in Wi-Fi, and it's something that's helping him out even here. But that's enough for the Kirby for the time being. Hopefully we'll see more of Black Twins later on in the day. But for now, uh, moving on to the next set, we have Peace versus Naito Shark. So another familiar name to uh, Wi-Fi Supremacy. Yeah, uh, and, and again, like Shark, such, a, such an amazing play. I will always gush about how much of a good time it is to watch uh, Shark succeed. 
Uh, there's truly no play in my eyes that can that can really come close to like a lot of how efficiently he positions himself around the stage with just a plethora of characters. He always brings so much excitement to the table. So. Uh, we're just going to be waiting for them to jump on in. So Sharp going to be going up against Peace. Uh, and Peace is, of course, uh, I believe that's the Luigi play. Ooh. All right. So 